I was accused of being racist for using an East Coast accent. Senior year of high school, I went to Covenant Catholic, your typical all-boys Catholic school. We all know the racist rich kids, all that type of shit, and their parents own everything in the area, and they drive a Mercedes to school. That wasn't me, and that's a stereotype, too, for the record. <laughs> My parents busted their ass to send me to a Catholic school they had to pay for every month. Like that, For a lot of kids that go there, that's what it is. And like me and my buddies, we were driving our little Mazdas and Civics and our parents busted their ass to send us to that school. So <laughs> that stereotype always kind of annoyed me, honestly. But it was a great experience. And one of the big things that we had was a cheering section. So we're, we had a great basketball team my senior year. We're heading into districts, which is the tournament before region and state. We're playing a high school called Holmes High School. Now, this is just, it's just the image of it. You have the, you have the predominantly white, all guys Catholic school playing the school that was just majority African American kids. So don't blame us. You can't blame the kids that go to those schools for that demographic. If you want, blame the people who put the school districts together, right? Like it's just the reality of it. And when you're a kid, you're not, even, it's not even that deep. Like I hung out with kids from every freaking high school, every district. We went to parties together. It was, it was never that deep. You know what I mean? As far as like, race and religion and all that different stuff that everybody goes so crazy about now like when you're 16 17 years old it's just you're not even thinking that way it's just another school and another group of kids we were known for our high school cheering section so we're going to come out loud and obnoxious for our team and i think any athlete knows especially when you're playing in high school in those smaller arenas there's always one heckler and as the heckler our job is to get in the best player's head <laughs> And Holmes had a damn good team, too. They were always one of the best teams in the ninth region in Northern Kentucky. So we're playing Holmes. They had one kid that was supposedly, I don't remember if he was going to, like, Ohio or Cincinnati State. That's like, I know that's quite a far, wide drop-off. But he was the best player on their team, and we got his name. <laughs> and I'm not going to use his real name. But after, like, the first quarter, some of the guys in our cheering section as seniors, they wanted me to start heckling him. And I don't know where it came from I don't know why I thought of it but it just came out of me and every time he, this New Jersey accent started and every time he was touching the ball at the free throw line my buddies would get everyone would get quiet and I'd be like Markel McMuffin he's a baller and I would just start screaming that I didn't say anything else but that he's a baller he's going to vision one watch out for Mark. Markel McMuffin, a real baller. <laughs> and again, I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I was doing that, but that is to a T how it sounded and what I was doing. So we ended up beating him by like 15, and he had an off night. And you know, anytime a kid misses a free throw and you're heckling with something as stupid as an East Coast accent, you feel like you're doing it. And here's the best part. I picked up the New Jersey accent, how I thought of it was our freshman year basketball coach who was from Kentucky. He had a real South, like South New Jersey type of accent like this. But I was like, dude, you're from Beachwood, Kentucky. Like, where did that come from? And that always stuck with me. So when I saw him on the sidelines, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to do a New Jersey accent. Like, that's like such an out-of-pocket thing. And me and my buddies got hysterical because there was just no thought behind it. It was as stupid as a New Jersey accent. But like I said, the kid had a bad shooting night, and I felt like we got in his head with the New Jersey accent. <laughs> so nobody thinks anything of it. We go home. Our basketball team won. We're heading on to the regional uh, tournament as one of the top seeds. So we were all feeling pretty good about ourselves. Next day, we go to school. And I was in the journalism class, <laughs> which was pretty much, it was, we were supposed to do the yearbook, but it was for, you know, for me, it was pretty much a bullshit class. Our principal at Cuffcath was a real tight, tightly wound guy. I'll put it that way. We hear an announcement over the loudspeakers. Will the senior class please report to the cafeteria for an assembly? And it's like second period, early in the day. And I'm in my head like, but I'm like, dude, I ain't got time for that. I'm supposed to be working on these pages for the yearbook. I'm, I'm doing that instead. I straight up told my teacher, I'm like, hey, I'm skipping this uh, assembly. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, it's fine or whatever. It's not my, I'm just going to act like I didn't see you. I don't care. <laughs> so I think nothing of it. I work. It's probably like a 30, 45 minute assembly. And I go on to the next class, which is religion. And as I'm walking down the hall, a senior, my class, all my classmates are getting out of the cafeteria assembly, and they're like, 
bro, where, where were you? And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, it was a fucking meeting I just didn't feel like going to. It was a speech from our principal about behavior at games. And, <laughs> and he centered the whole thing about don't be mean to kids from other schools when you don't know what their home life is like. And he used me as an example. So he's going, where's Tom Ziegler? It's Tom Ziegler here. I bet he checked the attendance sheet or whatever. Saw my name was there. Must have centered this whole speech around my New Jersey accent and heckling some kid from another school or whatever. I don't know. Like I, they try to make it like, oh, we don't know what their home life is like. It's like, yeah, I understand. Like shit, everybody's trying to get it out the mud and hustle, right? Like that's that's life. <laughs> it don't matter if you're middle class, lower class, upper class. At the end of the day. Unless you ain't got to work for nothing in your life, you're busting your ass. So supposedly, like I said, I wasn't there. But he centered the whole speech around not knowing kids' backgrounds and trying to be more conscious of where these kids are coming from. And it's like, (laughs) shit. I I don't think I would have taken it that very well because even though I'm at the rich prep school, I tell you, I've worked a lot. I've worked pretty fucking hard to be here. (laughs) You know, like, shit. Whether you're going to the rich Catholic school in the area or you're going to the prep school like everybody's got a different path that they got to take to get it out the mud and hustle like that it has nothing to do in my opinion has nothing to do with the school and sure like your parents might have a little bit of different background whether it's a two-parent home and they're making a ton of money or a single parent home and you got to fucking work your entire life like everybody's past a little different but you know unless you're coming from the upper echelons of echelons and you ain't got to work a day in your life everybody's got to put in some fucking work in their life that's (laughs) That's the reality of it. Just because the path looks a little different for everyone doesn't mean that it's less significant or more important or whatever you want to say. Like I, I've said this a million times on here, like we all have the equal opportunity to go out and get after it. It's your choice to do it. <laughs> and and just because I'm white in front of an American flag, that doesn't make me racist for saying that. That's the truth. That's the system that's been created here in the United States. And y'all can have whatever theory or religional speech or historical theory on what you think has happened here in America. But at the end of the day, none of the shit that happened in the past really fucking matters because what we're doing right now and in the present day is all you can control. And if you control what you do and you fucking hustle and work your ass off, that's how you fucking make it in America. And if you've got a problem with that, maybe you shouldn't live in fucking America. Facts. Mic drop. Anyway. The principal of our school centers the whole speech around that I come walking out out of the hallway, going to my next class, which I think was religion, and all my senior classmates, they are literally just leaving the cafeteria, and they go, where were you, Tom? Tom, where, where were you, bro? What are you, what are you doing? I'm like, what the fuck you mean I'm doing? I was working on the yearbook. I didn't have time to go to that assembly. I'm two months behind on the assignments I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> and they're like, no, like, the principal i can say his name but they're like yeah you just got called out in there <laughs> i guess the principal was like where's tom ziggler tom ziggler stand up where's tom ziggler like three times i'm i'm skip the skip the assembly that i get called out on and thank god because i would have been red faced as a motherfucker probably embarrassed as hell to get called out because <laughs> like i said we were the cross country kids so i always felt like we could get away with everything and fly below the radar so the fact that i got called out i would have been sweating fucking bullets i wouldn't have had shit to say <laughs> But uh, it was just so comical that, like, out of the six or seven assemblies that we had had senior from my junior to senior year, I probably caused three or four of them. And the one that I get called out in was for the most innocent act. And on top of that, <laughs> on top of that, I skipped it. <laughs> so that was just just comedy when you really think back on it. Like, what are the odds of that? So it was it was great. And. Again, I'll say this to the day I die. The whole thing about, I understand, like, the reality of America is we have different cultures and we have different ethnicities and religions that populate and dominate certain eras. So you get predominantly white school districts. You get predominantly black school districts. You get predominantly Mexican school districts, Latino school districts, whatever the proper terminology is. You know, here in America, we are the melting pot, right? Like, I think that's, I understand that some people have more financial advantages or career advantages because of their history right and we can go on and on about the history of america and slavery and whatever the hell else you believe in right like whatever truly happened with the history of america but at the end of the day the past is the past and here in america we're the melting pot we are the land of equal opportunity and if you really want to go hustle and you want to go get it on go get it on (laughs) like 
You can't make excuses for yourself your entire life. It's just not it. And I guess that's my thing by saying, like, yeah, I went to an all-guys Catholic school. Yes, it was predominantly white. Stereotypes for rich white kids or smart Asian kids, right? <laughs> like, you could go on and on and on about that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the past is the past. And for us to get so caught up in the history of racist America and everybody is owed something, like, that, you're, the, whole, the whole thing about that is, like, they're just trying to, and I say they because there is an upper ring of elite people in our country that think they should control it like a dictatorship. That's fucked up. <laughs> we are the land of equal opportunity. And what us middle classers and lower class people, because trust me, I'm one of them. I'm fucking broke living at my parents' house just paying for the shit that I can pay for. But I'm telling all of you. You got to drop all the fucking social justice bullshit. And I'm not just saying Black Lives Matter. Don't get all fucking, a white guy in front of the American flag, you're fucking racist. Ah! Fucking puke. It's the country I live in. Why would I not put it up? Fuck. It's so exhausting. And that's a whole nother thing. You want to make everybody who wears a cross and says they believe in God and likes America a fucking racist, especially if they're white. You're not a racist for loving your country. That's called patriotism. And that's the other thing, right? Like, you try to act like all the people on the left are all for the minorities and changing things and doing things better. And the people on the right are all the rich or poor, ignorant white people who don't know how to fucking act and think America's theirs. America's is everybody's. America's is a fucking melting pot. So at the end of the day, everybody on the left has an agenda. Everybody on the right has an agenda. And I believe the truth is... Of what's, of what's best for America is somewhere in between. <laughs> Let's just be fucking honest there. Everybody in politics, everybody who owns a big corporation these days, they all have a fucking agenda to make their lives better. So don't ever think that somebody up there is putting you first. That's just facts. And I mean, I hope to God someday we get somebody back in office who, who really puts the people first. And a lot of people say that all this stuff about Trump Fuck, he was the closest thing we had to putting the people first in a long fucking time. Long fucking time. Anyway, at the end of the day, I used a fucking New Jersey accent. It just got completely blown out of proportion. And again, like I said, just the best part of that is I didn't get in any fucking trouble for it. So so that's today's speech on Talks with Tom. I guess I was feeling dicey today. Maybe just angry. I don't know. But yeah. Watch where you use New Jersey accent, I suppose. Shots by the lake till I can't even